see now with your curriculum requirement for green belt in Kamba Hapkido. Our first category again is kicks. We have two kicks in this segment. One is called the scoop kick. Scoop kick is very interesting because the word itself tells you what the kick looks like. You basically, you like scooping, scooping up this way. It is generally directed to the shin bone, but always from the knee down. It's an extremely low line kick. So it can be used as a distraction before, during a jaw clock, or it can be used as a standalone technique by itself. So let's assume he grabs me here, he comes aggressively toward me. I'm using the back leg in this case. Boom, this will be the scoop kick. Directed right from the ground up into the shin bone, stopping basically at the knee. Now, if he was facing me this, the, the opposite way, I could also use it as a little bit as a takedown by striking the back of the knee or into the calf muscle real hard. Boom. And that could have this effect of taking him down. So front of the leg, back of the leg, you can use it. If I want to use it from the front leg, I lose a little bit of power, but it's so fast, and I can use it as a distraction in the case before I do some kind of lock. So boom, this way, and I go into my lock. So it's a very versatile kick, very simple and easy to use uh, in any type of circumstance. The next kick is the slap kick. Some people call it also twisting kick. It involves taking your lead leg and almost doing an inverted roundhouse, where this time you don't have the opportunity to, to launch the back foot because of the angle of attack. You turn your body and you're slapping with the instep. So here, coming in, twisting your body. Notice how you twist at the very end so that you get power generating into that kick. You don't want to do it like this because there's no power. Twist and slap, hitting with the instep. Okay, so one here can be used as a groan, boom, or to the midsection. Remember, we don't kick high. Right about waist level is fine. This is a great kick for a side attack also. And usually the center mass here, or like you said, the groin, once again, we don't try to go for the head, okay? It throws you off balance too much. It's an excellent kick, and I'd like you to demonstrate a couple more times. Come here. In the category of strikes, we have two in this segment. And they are very common to every martial art. The first one is called the pound heel strike. Basically what you're using is the bottom part of your palm. They are open hand strike, by the way, this one and the next one. So a close quarter, or even if you have a little bit of range, this is your strike. Now it's not always directed to the to the chin here like they show in some martial arts. It can be directed to other part of the head. For instance, if he was facing away from me in a, in a confrontation, I could pound heel this way. There is nothing wrong, side of the head, the temple area even, right on top of the ear, like that. So regardless of where he's facing, if, he's, if his head is down this way during a confrontation, I can go on the top of the nose and push away. So the palm heel strike is really effective for a variety of target, not necessarily the only traditional one going here. Okay, it's extremely, as a matter of fact, it can be also done into the body, like in the rib cage. It's a very effective strike. Does not damage your fingers or, or wrist at all. It's a great strike. So once again, palm heel strike, okay? You can do it from the lead hand if you're standing here immediately. You can do it from the back hand as a cross here. Very effective strike. The next one is called tiger mouth. The position is your, of your hand is this way, like this, open, fingers tied together, like if you were trying to grab and hold on to something, like a pole or something, grab hard. Okay, it's not a loose, soft hand. This one is a tight one. What you're gonna do, it has two parts. The first one is the strike itself, which, by the way, can stand alone. Coming here, it's always directed to the throat, specifically to the tracheal area from the front. So he grabs me, or maybe he's got a punch ready to come, I'm gonna strike him this way, okay? The second part of this is after you strike, if you follow him and then tighten up, it can become a tracheal grab. 
and that is good to take him down and even choke him. Remember the trachea is a lethal area, so be extremely careful and, and stay within legal and moral boundaries. So for, for instance, from a grab, I'm gonna shoot up straight. Please don't do, it, don't do it fast with your partner, you're gonna hurt them, okay? Like this. It's a very devastating strike. So slowly, you have your hand here, tight, go straight up, and then as I said, if you wanna follow up, from here, you could squeeze and take down. And now you have your tracheal uh, grab. <clears throat> and that's called the tiger mat. The next category, once again, is breakaways. We have a few more to go through in this curriculum. Person grabs you. On this one here, what are you gonna do? You're gonna strike him twice, possibly. Unless he's too tall or too far away from you, you may miss the first one. But if you step in properly, uh, you should be able to do the first strike. The first strike will be with your elbow to his face. The same side is grabbing. So coming in, you're gonna strike him this way. Your other hand is gonna grab, hold him, and hit him again. So you basically have to strike into him, out and coming back to strike him a second time. So from here, okay, we're gonna go one, that's your first strike, and then two, the second strike. Now you notice that Master Rivas turns his head because he doesn't wanna get hit even accidentally. But imagine the attacker, okay, will be receiving the first strike here and his face will probably be exactly right there and then you come back with the second strike. Once again, here you have double or even triple strike. Again, it depending on the situation. This is totally vertical. You're gonna shoot your hand up in an angle and hit him with your elbow either in his sternum or right here in his gut, in his solar plexus, depending. So you're gonna step in, one. Remember that as soon as I turn this way, he's gonna lose the grip. That's your breakaway right there. That's why it's called the breakaway. So you're coming in, one, boom. Then you're gonna hit his chin because he comes forward and you're gonna hit him here. And then if you need to, you do a third elbow strike downward right into his sternum or collarbone depending on his body position. So you can hit him two or three times. Very effective and very uh, aggressive technique. One more time, very slowly we're gonna do it. I protect myself, I'm gonna step in, keep your elbow close to you and then angle as you're coming out now very fast, boom, strike here, continue upward, and then finish that way, that way. Since you just learned in the striking category, the tiger mouth, now we'll show you an application into the breakaway. Very interesting, so you can connect everything together. Once again, it grabs you. I make my tiger mouth right there. I prepare my hand, and I use the same hand that is being grabbed as a strike. So from here, I'll be protecting me myself here. I'm stuck right there. Now remember to bring your whole body to bear. Don't use your arm alone. You, you're not going to be able to do it. So that's why I say keep your elbow close to your body. And as you're coming in, then this one acts as the breakaway because it, it will let go as you're coming up. See? And this will be your strike here. The other way to do it is by pulling him in and using the other hand. Same elbow step. So from here, you do this way. And as you're striking, he will let go. And that's your breakaway. From this side, you can see this better. Because I'm gonna shoot my elbow back. So on this one here, what I will do, it will be this one. So breakaway and tiger mouth. Uh, on the first one, you're using the same hand. This is very devastating too, because you're gonna be right on top of it. With all your power, right here. And then you can go for follow-ups, of course. This one is a nice breakaway. You're gonna escape, basically turning behind them, and then you're gonna put them in a choke, or some other technique you may wanna do at that point. So we begin by breaking away. How do you accomplish that? Same as in, in the beginning, pushing in a little bit. As you step in behind them, then you shoot your arm out to affect the breakaway. With the other hand, you will strike him in the kidney area, the lower back area. The lower, the better because if you hit him low, his body's gonna arch backwards, which is what you want. So I'm gonna strike him here, 
And then from here, I can catch it and put him into a choke. Or I can do something else. From here, I'm going to break away. I'm going to strike and then simply come over here and take him to the ground. Finish or defeat or disengage. One more time. Yeah, let's do it from this side. So you're going to see the other part. As I'm escaping, I push into him a little bit, whip my leg around, break away, strike, lower back. I can even go here and just take him down and then finish here. So there are many different finishes to the technique, but the first part has to be done right. So once again, I want to show you the spin. Here, push in a little bit, whip your leg around, shoot the hand away, and go for your strike. The next one is also very interesting. It involves striking as well as breaking away, and then you can add a nice takedown here too. It grabs you. This time, again, always open your hand wide. It's time to go a little bit higher, okay? This way, this is what you want to do. Why? Because you got to go underneath. And if you keep it this way, you have to bend down and you don't want to do that. So coming higher, stepping under. Keep your hand wide open and now striking with your elbow or your forearm as you keep breaking away here. Now from here, you have choices. You can disengage, but what I like is a good takedown at this point. I can grab his clothes, whatever he's wearing, and then kick this leg here Okay, not the other one, otherwise it will rotate and fall in top of you. But if you kick this leg here, down it goes. And then you can finish or disengage. So, let's look at it one more time. From here, bring this one up. Now, don't exaggerate, you don't have to go up here, but nice and high so that you don't have to bend down too much. Cross with your leg here, strike, <clears throat> grab, Take down. Finish. I want to show it to you one time from this side. So from here, same thing. Going to go this way as you're stepping under. One. From here, you're going to strike as you come this way. And then from here, and finish. Now begins the joint locking category for your green belt. And the first one, he grabs, remember always the distraction, okay? So I don't have to repeat myself. On this one here, very aggressive on this one, you're gonna come around here as you grab him with the second hand, step into it and slam him into your body by pulling him in, <clears throat> like this. Keep the pressure here, compressing the wrist, you can let this hand go now to strike him one or even twice, depending on the situation. And then from here, after you hit him, just simply come around, grab into the trachea underneath, pull his head back, keep the compression here. And you have it. Then from here, if you decide to take him down from this point, you can go backward. Here. Or you could even go forward by changing the position. So from here, slamming in, striking, here, locking, and then if you want to take him down forward, you could just simply come with your arm bar, okay? But let's focus on this part one more time. So from here, one, as you reach this point, that both of your hands are securely tight around his, that's when you pull him and slam him into you. Here, strike, one, twice if you need to. Come back around, Lock the trachea and compress the wrist. Person grabs you. This time you're not going to counter grab at all. You're just going to place his wrist in the web of your hand there because you need the control here. And then if you want to, you can counter grab at this point, but not right away. As you come in here, what you want to do, uh, stepping across, you want to slam his arm into your forearm. So in other words, when you think of an arm bar, that we do this, it's almost like that, with the difference that you're pushing down while you're striking up to double the effect, the impact. That's gonna damage and most of all weaken the arm, that you can do the second part of the technique. So we're gonna go here, one, 
two, and then bend them here. And when you have them here, you probably need only one hand. Simply take them down and then finish on the ground. Strikes, locking them up, disengaging, whatever. So fairly simple, but fairly devastating to the arm. So from here, one, two, see, this is a strike. You're coming out, coming out, bam, like this. So it's gonna hurt a lot. One, bam, and then here, and then you take him down. This technique is basically the arm bar, uh, performed from the same side the wrist grab. The first part of this, besides the destruction, is a counter grab. You gotta effect a circle here to counter grab it. This is probably the difficult part of the technique. You've got to practice this many times. So from here, one. And give him the like a whiplash effect to, to move his body. Don't just simply try to do this, okay? Do this. Then from here, guess what's exposed here? His forearm. His whole arm here. And then you know the point that you need to use, it's called the tricep tendon. Bring it closer to you as you're doing it, and simply bring it down, and then you have it ready for whatever follow-up, cuffing or whatever, or simply disengage. Very simple technique, but very effective. Once again, I distract, I come around, give it a little whiplash effect, I tap with this hand here as I'm bringing it down to me, and right here I am. This one could almost be considered a finger locking technique because you're gonna attack the finger, but you're also trapping the wrist. So there is many different things happening here. Very interesting technique. Person grabs you, maybe you do a quick distraction or you step on his foot or whatever you need to do. Bring the hand wide open, bring the hand closer to you, reach underneath and grab the wrist. Now take this hand here, rotate it, and put pressure into his finger. Very painful. If you did it fast and hard, it could also be a, a finger break. You could go bam and break his finger. If you don't want to do that, so you're using it simply this way, come up, bring this just about shoulder level. Okay, so come up, comfortably insert this one, rotate underneath, put pressure going upward and into him, and then push him away from you. Now, if I push him too far, he's gonna get off the camera and you're not gonna be able to see. So I'm gonna push him just a little bit here and then you can follow up with a nice side kick because now you have the range to kick. You cannot follow up with a punch or anything because he's gonna be too far away from you. So from here, once again, bring it up a shoulder level, insert, roll, put the pressure into the finger, push him away from you and follow up with a nice kick if you want. In some styles, this, uh, this next technique is known as the goosenecks. There are several variations. There is the inverted goosenecks, side, vertical, horizontal. But anyway, uh, the gooseneck we're gonna do on, in this case is gonna be from a same side wrist grab. And once again, it involves a little bit of manipulation and counter grabbing uh, that it's gonna take a little time to, to learn, but it's a great technique. So from here, once again, maybe destruction first, boom, boom, depending on what you choose. Then from here, let's focus on this part here. What are you gonna do with your hand wide open? You're gonna make a small circle once again, come around here, slide your hand over, all the way over the back of his hand here. Then with the other hand, bring him into you, right here in the center, and then apply pressure. You can also use only one hand this way. If you were a police officer, you need to access to other weapon or controlling, or you can use two hands. From here, of course, you can take him down, going backwards, or you can take him down going forward. Different, different story. But right now, let's look at this here. This is the pressure. Do not keep him here, because he's gonna simply escape. You gotta put him into your center line or a little bit even past your center line here to have the compression. So once again, we're gonna do the counter grab in a very small circle, very small circle. Here, now right there. Then from here, you bring him in and you lock it. This can be a wrist break if you just did you can break his wrist if that's what you need to do. Okay, one more time slowly. One, slide it in, bring him into you like this, and then you can use both hands for your compression.
Next category for green belt, cross wrist grabs. Okay, we got the first one here. I'm gonna show it to you from both angles, uh, different side, because you gotta see the detail coming in from different sides. On this one here, what are you gonna do? At the same time as you're securing your hand, once again, remember, if you hit him hard, he's gonna let go. So as soon as he grabs you, open your hand, as if you're striking, secure his hand. With the other hand, you're gonna to try to find the pressure point here in his forearm. There are many, and to learn more, you need to go to our ATS program, the pressure point program that we have. But for now, just stick your thumb in there and press down. You should be able to find the pressure point. Then step across and take him down. And there you have him once again in this position. You can flip him over, you can do other things. One more time from this side. He grabs me, you can slap it here, insert, take him down here. See, when you do them fast, they look a lot better and they're more devastating, more dynamic. However, for training, number one, for safety, and second of all, that way you can learn better by doing them slowly, step by step, so you can follow every detail. Yes. On this side, yes, uh, on this side here, I'm gonna turn my back to you, but you will see what happens here. Same thing, either one or two, come back here, counter grab here a little bit, here, pressure point, step across, and then from here, drop it straight down. This one is extremely painful, so be very careful. There are different names, some people call it horizontal gooseneck, some people Z lock, some people S lock. Doesn't really matter what nickname you wanna give it. Basically, what is gonna to happen to him is an incredible amount of pain by having his arm this way. It resembles maybe a little bit of an S, and you have a tremendous amount of pressure applied to this, so you will see in a second. After your distraction here, Okay, you come in around, open hand again, trap immediately. Like I said, you don't want him to let go. So as you hit, boom, trap. This one bring it across and lock in. This is extremely painful technique. Now there are a couple of different ways of doing it and I don't want to confuse you, but just to show you for presentation purposes only. Once you get to this point, you don't necessarily have to come to grab you may also use the blade of the hand right into the pressure point of the wrist here. And it works just the same, sometimes even better, depending on the person. But uh, to learn it, I think it's a little bit better if you trap and then counter grab here. Put pressure on his finger, pressure him toward the hand, pressure his finger toward it. Don't just try to do all the work with your hand here. Do work with this hand too, and push right into him. Point your finger toward this heart. There is a pressure point reason why. So once again, he grabs me, distraction trap, coming in, or counter grabbing and coming in. Very painful technique. This category, we're going back to a cross wrist grab. Uh, we're gonna be very simple this time. Very easy. All you're gonna do is just counter grab his wrist. As he's coming, and step behind him to avoid also being hit here. So from here, very simple, come around this way. Now, you see, you have plenty of target here for a takedown. You could also switch to a choke if you want to. So very simple. From here, make sure as you counter grab, you hide behind him and pull him into you here. So you don't have to worry much about this hand. And then come around here. If he had maybe long hair, you could also grab the hair and take him down this way. Well, different variations for that. One more time from here, one, pull him into you, reach and lock into the trachea. 